Hello, hello, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. I am excited to introduce George Saab, SVP of Development for the Java Platform and Chair of the Open JDK Governing Board. George, year two, baby. Yep, thanks. glad to be back, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for coming on, thanks, thanks for coming on. Now, we're gonna get into Java 21 because of course, but before we do, can you just take a step back for those who are tuning in who might not know and explain briefly about what Java is and what it is above and beyond just being, you know, a programming language. Yeah. Well, you know, Java is a programming language, um, super popular one, um, but it's also a programming platform. So it provides all kinds of facilities for, you know, high performance, scalable and secure runtime for running all kinds of range of, of applications. Why does Java remain relevant three decades in, um, and, and why do developers keep using it and contributing to yeah. it? Well, I think it's a combination of things. Um, there's been constant investment by us uh, and others throughout the community in order to try to make sure that there's like a constant stream of innovation. Um, but it's also that that innovation has really you know, made it so that people who invested in and use Java are getting dividends, right, that are very tangible for them as they go along. Like, they write their application, it continues to work, but gets better, and helps them take advantage of new trends, new hardware, new architectures for writing software. All right, let's get to the news. Yeah. Um, what are the most important feature and function improvements to Java 21? Well, you know, Java 21 um, is the latest of the six-month release cadence that we've done. Um, and so one thing that's nice about it is, in addition to the 15 uh, JEPs, which is JDK Enhancement Proposals, or features in, in 21, it also includes everything that has come along since the last uh, of the long-term supported releases that we've done, which was Java 17. So you really have you know, multiple years of goodness kind of all baked into one thing that's easy to pick up and use. So many of the notable announcements uh, seem to focus around Project Loom. Can you explain what yeah. Project Loom is? Yeah, so this is sort of how we do the development now. Rather than a big project that all goes in at once, we have a project that we're doing on the side where we try to work on you know, new functionality and deliver incrementally into successive six-month releases. Project Loom is focused on scalability. So Java's always had a, you know, a great reputation for being scalable, um, but with Project Loom, what we've done is introduce something called virtual threads. And this basically means that rather than one Java thread to one native platform thread, you can have uh, tens or hundreds, uh, you know, even thousands, tens of thousands of virtual threads for each platform thread. And that means you can continue to write really simple, easy to understand, synchronous Java code um, and actually have that scale tremendously better than you could before this. Thank you. Um, now we always hear that Java is a great platform for building secure applications. Right. Why is that so? And more importantly, because it's all about the customer, why is that so important for our customer? Well, you know, security obviously is something that's very important and even more important as we're going along. Um, you know, the more accessible our applications are, the more kind of, you know, data that we're, we're um, keeping track of, the more important it is that it remains secure. And so Java helps you a lot there by implementing a lot of the things and providing support for, um, you know, cryptography, secure communications, things like that. Um, but also because when in these long-term supported releases, we have a constant stream of fixes that are coming along basically every quarter and you know a year in advance when it's going to be. Uh, we have new fixes coming along that help keep you up to date um, with the changing security landscape. And what role does long-term support play in this in really helping ensure customers' applications are secure, stable, modernized yeah. as possible? Yeah, so you know, I mentioned the six-month releases before. Right. That's really about getting new functionality in the hands of developers for new development they're doing. The long-term support is basically something for you know, the organization that has something that's up, that's running, they just want it to be stable and secure and performant, and basically giving them years of that kind of support where they not only know that they're going to be getting fixes proactively from us, but they also have a partner that they can come to with questions and if they run into problems, that's going to look after them. Now we yanked you over here into cloud world, so uh, got to ask a cloud question. Yep. Where does Java fit into um, OCI and how does Java support software development in the cloud? Yeah, so you know Java is one of the technologies that's used to build the cloud. Um, it is also something that people who want to deploy to the cloud use. 
Um, and in fact, you know, that shouldn't be any surprise, but you know, sometimes it, it is. Um, super, super popular uh, you know, across the industry for writing applications where you're going to deploy to the cloud. And the reason for that is you know, Java has such a rich ecosystem. In addition to the platform itself, um, you know, there, there's a ton of third-party libraries, frameworks, just, you know, just about anything you want to do, you're going to find a resource that's there for you. All right, we have two other pieces of news in today's announcement. Yeah. Um, Java Playground and a new way of accepting community contribution. So a two-part question here to wrap up. What is the significance of Java Playground? And two, tell us about the changes to community uh, uh, contributions. Yeah. Um, so the Java Playground is basically something that we've added to the dev.java site. And that's a site you can go to that has a wealth of information about what's happening in Java, where we're headed, new features in a release like 21. And the Playground basically is just an interactive development environment where you can go in and try them out in your browser. Just try them out. You don't have to download anything. Um, you, know, you can just get started and see how they work. Um, and then in terms of you know, community contributions, right. um, we do like to recognize the fact that Oracle um, you know, leads the development of Java in the OpenJDK community, but we welcome a lot of contributions from others. Um, and that really makes Java rich and very applicable to a wide range of applications. So love to see it and like to thank those people. Of course. What's next? What's next for Java? Well, a lot of things. So in addition to the projects that have been delivering over the last couple of years, um, we have a whole new set of projects that are coming online now. Uh, Project Valhalla, which is about memory management in Java and making it super, uh, super, super efficient for you know, complex data structures. Project Leiden, that's about startup and warm up improvements. Um, and then we also uh, are working on things to make Java more accessible for the next generation of developers. So making it easy for people who are new to programming, new to Java, to get started and come up to speed. Great, well, we are certainly looking forward to all of it. Very excited to hear everything that's going on with Java 21. So thank you, George, so much for coming on year two yeah, of Oracle TV. Pleasure to be here. TV. I'll look forward to next year. Of course, <laughs> of course. Thank you.